Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So, if normally if you see glucose 6-phosphate in the presence of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, it forms 6-phosphogluconate. During this process, uh, NADP gets converted to NADPH. Now, this NADPH is converted back to NADP, thus restoring NADP and during this process, the hydrogen of NADPH is given to the glutathione, thus forming reduced glutathione. This reduced glutathione gives its hydrogen to oxygen free, rad free radicals or oxidative radicals and like H2O2 and it forms H2O. All this process occurs when the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is present normally. But if there is any glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, in such cases in RBC there is increased susceptibility to oxidative damage. And this increased susceptibility to oxidative damage denature the heat. So, whenever there is oxygen free radicals, they will denature the hemoglobin chains. These hemoglobin chains will form Heinz bodies, which will cause whenever there is direct damage to RBC, this will lead to intravascular hemolysis. And be these, because of these Heinz bodies, the flexibility of RBC decreases. Thus, the, there is extravascular hemolysis occurs in splenic circulation. And these hemolyzed cells forms the bite cells and spirocytes and blister cells are also seen. With Heinz bodies, we see these bite cells, spirocytes, blister cells and hemolyte uh, blister cells are also seen. So now, whenever so these are the things that normally occur. So whenever there is oxidative stress. There is this oxidative stress causes hemolysis. This oxidative stress can occur due to the uh, infections like pneumonia or sepsis, drugs like antimalarials like primaquin, sulfa drugs, primaquin, sulfa drugs or antituberculous drugs or sometimes foods like flavobene can also result in G6PD deficiency, right? So, so uh, let us see the picture. Right. In this picture, I am drawing the Heinz bodies. So, these are actually RBC in the crystal uh, crystal violet stain. So, in the RBCs with the help of crystal violet stain, the blue color dots will be seen which are Heinz bodies. Then along with that, we also see bite cells, spirocytes are seen. These In these bite cells, the small bite which is there is not due to hemolysis but it is because the Heinz body which is normally present there is not stained properly. So as a result we look that it looks as though the um, cell has been eaten up by something. So we call it as bite cell but the truly there is a Heinz body there uh, hiding because of not getting stained. So G6 period deficiency is an X-linked recessive disorder this is an unstable enzyme so g6pd deficiency mainly occurs in the stress and when there is stress there is destruction of elderly rbc occurs so this will lead to the self-limiting hemolysis so in g6pd deficiency the hemolysis is self-limiting it limits on its own itself we have three different types of g6pd deficiency type 1, type 2, type 3, type 1 is mildest form, type 2 is moderately severe form whereas type 3 is most severe form of G6PD deficiency. Then if we see the variants, we have 4 variants of G6PD deficiency, B type more than A plus type, more than A minus type, more than M type. 
B type has normal half life and most common whereas A plus A minus and M there is decreased half life with severity of half life increasing from A plus A minus and M. M is the most severe form of G6 PD deficiency. Diagnosis Diagnosis is done by the history and if we do blood examination we normally see decreased hemoglobin other parameters will be normal. If we do a peripheral blood smear examination white cells are present blister cells um, spirocytes are seen with HND stain but Heen's bodies are seen with uh, crystal violet stain with the help of crystal violet stain Heen's bodies are visualized so the best diagnosis is to assess the G6PD level estimation this is done by electrophoresis this will help us to grade the subtype of G6PD we can also do sodium nitrate a myth hemoglobin reduction assay can also be done for G6PD level estimation. So whenever in patients with G6PD deficiency they are resistant to falciparum, falciparum malaria infections because even if the falciparum uh, plasmodium falciparum infects the RBCs so that those RBCs are rapidly cleared by the um, body thus uh, causing no infection then if you see the treatment no drugs are required for g6 period efficiency because it is a self-limiting disorder so these are the important points about g6 period efficiency thank you for watching